Hey, what's up, everyone? So we got another episode of Growth by Sean podcast. So I have Yogev Almag, and I try not to butcher names. So, but um, yeah, we're going to talk all about copywriting today, a little bit different than we normally talk about. So uh, Yogev, how are you doing today? I, I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing fantastic, Sean. It's, all right. Uh, towards the end of the day, just a lot of, just got through all the meetings and everything, went to the gym. I was, the, it's been a fantastic day today. I just feel feel hyper, hyper, hyper effective. Beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. So um, I'd love to just start with a little bit of your background. You can start uh, kind of with anything, um, how you got into copywriting or one of your first uh, stints at it or where you are now, kind of, you can go uh, where you want with it. So yeah, sure. uh, I can give you a, a little bit of a condensed history on this. Yeah, just a brief so, synopsis, nothing crazy, whatever you want yeah. to share. <laughs> just like a nice 150 page autobiography, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Uh, perfect. Yeah. So, okay. So my journey starts like a little mm. different than just about everyone else. So everyone really has mm. this, um, this crazy rags to riches story, right? This like this, I blew up and I was fantastic. And it was, it was great all the whole delay afterwards. And mine, mine is nor dramatic, nor un like uninteresting, if that makes any sense. Okay, so like, no. there's a lot of, there's a lot of interesting pieces to it. Um, but it's not, it's not this crazy dramatic, like I was like on the floor, like I, I, I basically was out, right out of college. Uh, so I went to school at Drexel University. Uh, if you know anything about Drexel, it is a five-year college. So half the time that you're there, you're actually working a full-time job. And oh, wow. the whole pull is like, you get to work a full-time job in your field. Mm. I was a marketing major. Mm. So I had three jobs, three separate jobs in three different places um, that were like six months. So it's not even like an internship. It's like you double the internship and you get paid. So oh, okay. you get real, real work experience there. The, that's like the, the pull in. That's what everyone mm -hmm. gets pulled in for. Right after college, I could not find a damn job for the life of me. <laughs> like I, I was in Philadelphia for a few months, like just applying to jobs left and right. Maybe it's going to be in mm -hmm. Philly and I'll stay here. Um, and just like nothing was hitting. And then I go back home and I live with my mother in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Nothing's hitting, nothing's hitting. I've hit about maybe... 150 maybe 200 applications for entry-level positions marketing associate not i'm not asking for anything yeah. like a forty thousand dollar a year job mm. uh and i would have been okay with that and that would have been mm -hmm. totally fine and no one wanted it like just no one just no one wanted to play ball so that was like a little bit just like the tiniest bit demoralizing for a second there yeah like you're sitting there you're I like understand. i have I have stuff going on here that so many other people, like so many other people don't even get internships and they're just like, they go into school, you know, they just go into a job right after school. Yep. Um, so that, that wasn't my story. What ended up being my story was I found copywriting through one of the dating coaches that I was following at the time, Jason oh, Capital, uh, okay. who happens to be the person that was that one of the mentors, uh, one of the mentees of my business partner, John. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been, it was really, really insane how they just kind of like, they kind of came up together. Like John was teaching him about writing and stuff. And then, you know, he goes into dating and I get a couple courses here and there. And then I get an email out of somewhere out of nowhere where he's like, Hey, so I have a copywriting course and like, I'm going to do email marketing. This is, this is okay. what it is. It's an email marketing course. Uh, and that was my entry point. Right. So I'm sitting there just every single week, just like trying to get better at it, getting better at it, getting better at it. Funny enough. Mm -hmm. a sales page in the program that uh that they used for like context of like hey this is a good sales page mm -hmm. happened to be one of john romanello's uh one of his sales pages oh, and okay. i don't i don't know if it was it wasn't for uh final face fat loss uh i'm, I'm assuming it was more like one-on-one -on -one coaching it was a you know he touches on the, the very classic story about like you know like the really skinny kid who's at the beach and then he gets like sand kicked on him by the really buff guy walking by and <laughs> And next year he like gets all buff and is doing it to the other guy. And like, now he has all the girls and stuff. It's yeah. It was, it was a, it was a great read. Yeah. And I remember reading that and writing it by hand, the whole entire thing, and then writing emails for it too. And I just remember sitting there going, I'm going to work with that guy one day mm. and not thinking about it 
a day, like not even thinking about it after that. I just, it was something I verbalized and just yep. kind of just put out into the universe and just like mm-hmm. never thought about it again. So as time goes on, I'm going on, you know, I'm just like, I'm trying to like get myself out there. No one's really biting because it's email marketing and I choose, mm. I chose, I chose nightlife. I chose nightclubs, bars, okay. restaurants, like things of that nature, which is not like those people don't need emails. Those people mm-hmm. definitely need emails. The sale just wasn't like the, the, the message wasn't getting through these people. Maybe it was because mm. I was just like not at the right point in time, or they just really didn't see the value in it. And like, I just okay. wasn't doing a good job as the rookie, just, you know, showing how much value that email marketing had. Yeah. Uh, but I just, you know, I'm still trekking along. I'm like someone, my dad connects me with someone who like has her own business and I start to work with her. And then I, some, at some point I'm at this conference, I'm at Jason Capital's conference mm-hmm. and I'm, I get like an email from that woman, from this person that my dad connected me with. And she basically kind of like, like threw it in my face. She was like, so I don't think you're good at this marketing thing. Like okay. definitely don't go out on your own. Maybe go mm-hmm. find a job and work for someone else first before you do this. I see. And I don't know if you've like read someone just like shit on you actively, like as you're it's, trying to. I, do your I'm thing. thinking of like this is destructive. Like yeah, uh, yeah. You you have a that's your pivot point right there. Mm-hmm. Do I listen to this person, accept the narrative that they've put on me, and just do what they say they're going to do because they're someone who's an expert, mm-hmm. or do I? steady the course, be very, very like strong-headed about it and be like, no, I'm going to make this work until it works. Like I'm mm-hmm. going to work this until it doesn't, it just is, it explodes until the wheels mm-hmm. fall off. Uh, and in that moment, I was like, fuck this, fuck that person. Anyone who's yeah. going to say that to me, anyone who doesn't want to say that to my face, will say, yeah. it, and we'll say it in an yeah. email. I don't need to listen to that. Person. Wasn't worth it anyways. Exactly. And and that was, that was like a pivot point for me. And weirdly enough, later on that day, I meet Brett, our other business partner. Okay. And uh, we like, we're at this, like, you know, we're at this like lunch and stuff. And like, we're kind of just like talking back and forth. Don't think about it at all. Later on in that night, we go to a club with all these people coming from the conference and stuff. He wraps his arm around me and he's like, you know what, man, we're going to work on a project together. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah, dude, then whatever, whatever you got to tell yourself. Sure. Yeah. yeah you're not going to remember this tomorrow or in a week, but sure. Uh, and I, again, I didn't think about that at all for a week, two weeks, something like that. And I get a phone call and he's like, Hey, I have a client. I don't have the bandwidth to do it. Uh, mm-hmm. Can I get like, do you want to tag team this? Do you want to work on this? And like, from there on, we just, we started our own little thing. It was just him and I, Mm -hmm. and I was the marketing, he was the sales side. And we were kind of bridging this gap between marketing and sales because Mm -hmm. every single person that we've come into contact with, those two things were in dysfunction and not in dysfunction, like individually, they were in dysfunction with each other, making everything else much more difficult. So we started making that our selling point and that, that started us to, you know, to write for more people. So we wrote for like, you know, we wrote for like a life coach, Peter Sage, and he mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, he's like very big back in the day and he had just come back and was starting to, you know, build up his following again and build up all of his resources and stuff, all his assets we worked for him for a while. We had a handful of other people that we were working for on the side, small gigs, you know, three, $4,000 gigs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, right, 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 right before COVID we're talking around like February, maybe, maybe January. Mm-hmm. Brett hits me up with this, like, idea to like hey just start dming just start dming people like mentors or like people that we want to work with or you know whatever just to start doing that and send them like a video message it seems to be working for me when i get I, I get responses and the first one that i end up doing the first one and the only one i end up doing was john oh wow <laughs> and and i don't know if he'll, i don't know if he'll he'll like uh no he'll tell you this mm. he doesn't check video dms like he okay. exclusively does not look at those because hmm. those are sketchy. Those could yeah. be, those could be nudes or Anything, those could be, really. those yeah. Could, yeah, yeah. You don't want to yeah. like, that could be, that could be whatever. But I get, I send him something. I'm like, I need, like, I just, I'd love to get mentored by you. That you'd, you'd be fantastic. Um, like I'm willing to do what it takes. Like, just let me know what it is. Like what the monetary cost is. Keep in mind, I'm making maybe about three grand, four grand a month at that point, mm-hmm. closer to three. Um, and I got on a phone call with him, immediate connection. We're talking about pop punk. We're talking about tattoos, we're talking <laughs> about marketing. We're talking about 
everything 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 it's like almost like an hour and a half two hour call at this point oh wow that's awesome yeah and it was was fantastic it was one of my first really great experiences just talking to someone who I knew was going to like try and sell me on something Mm -hmm. and it never came okay he never tried to (laughs) he told me what his service he told me what mentoring with him would look like it was like two grand a month he mentioned it and I was like I'm in he was like no you're not (laughs) <laughs> sitting there like confused like I'm willing to give you money I was like no you're not going to give me money you're telling me that if you give me the money that that this would cost you'd have just enough for rent and that's it and I was like yeah I'd figure it out and he's like absolutely not that's not how this is going to work it doesn't make me feel good to to like take two grand from you and like have you seriously struggle there's a better way we can do this I already get the sense that you're a great copywriter and that was like a moment of just like being seen Okay. And he was just like, come back to me with a couple of ideas, just a couple, just two, three, four, something along the lines of what we could do together and how we could work together. Cause I do workshops right now. I travel the world and do mm-hmm. workshops. I, I definitely could use help, but I'd also love to see what other things that you have in mind. Maybe it's a course, mm-hmm. maybe it's this, maybe it's that. All right. So I outline a couple of things, send it to him. We're going back and forth trying to meet in New York because we're both living in the city at this point. And, um, he just like, we, just, we can't find a time. And eventually he goes off to California where quarantine happens and he gets stuck there. So he just stays with him and himself and Amanda. They're just like staying there in their Mm -hmm. place over there. Um, And he goes dark for like, I don't know, like maybe, maybe about a month or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I'm not, I'm not thinking anything of it because that's just, that's, you know, sometimes how these things work. And I'm in very much in the, in the understanding of like, what comes to me, it will come to me. Like if it's meant for me, it'll, it'll be mine. I'll, I don't have to like, push and push and push this guy also doesn't seem like he's someone who will react to you pushing and pushing and pushing Mm -hmm. not his energy either in the middle of covid like me actually like three four weeks into covid whole entire city is shut down handful of clients had already left and then a Mm -hmm. couple of our other clients took us from like percentage to like a smaller retainer so it went from like we went from getting like maybe like two three grand a month to like i was just barely making rent like I was yeah. using credit, I was using credit cards to, oh, to make, uh, okay. and it was, it was a really big deal for me, but I was like, I'm still going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. I'd also just gone through like a really bad breakup at that point. So it seemed like mm-hmm. everything was, everything. Just, yeah, I was just going to say coming down on me yep. and like a fucking angel out of nowhere. Just, just <laughs> like that. I go to look at my phone and it's just this singular text message from John Romanello. Hey, you want to do a copywriting course? I was like, immediately, yes, immediately, <laughs> yes, God, I want please. to do a copywriting course. Please. <laughs> I will do anything right now. So we get on a phone call, myself, John, Brett, and we just kind of come to this decision to, to create this copywriting course, uh, Captivating Copywriting. And mm-hmm. within the first, I don't know, we, we, we put it together within two months, three months, recorded everything, did all the marketing for it, yada, yada, all that. And um, without any ads at that point, I think we had gotten to like, to like a quarter of a million. Oh, wow. And it was a, it was a big deal. It was a very, very big deal. It was like the first real money that I was seeing too. Like it was, um, it was like a revelation. It was like, Mm. this is what it's supposed to be like. This is what all the things were meant to be like. And that course ended up turning into like a couple of clients too. So like there was like maybe one or two clients where he's like, Hey, do you guys want to assist on this? I'll do this. Mm. You know, like we can just kind of go back and forth kind of like separating ourselves in terms of like, he was Wellspring Media and we were who we were. Mm -hmm. Um, And then at some point he's like, do you guys just want to be my partners? Like, we're already like doing most of this right now. Do you want to just like, just like, like, just like, let's, let's just like split the work and everything. Let's just do it. And like, you own, you own this percentage of the company. And I was like, so I don't work for you. And he's like, you absolutely don't work for me. Don't ever say that. Uh, And uh, it was a weird moment of just being like, now I'm, now I'm a business owner. Like before oh, wow. I was kind of roughing it right now. I'm yeah. a business. And from there, it's just been, it's been fantastic. We've worked with tons and tons of six and seven finger entrepreneurs. Mm. We've like turned funnels into like, into like, into like hitting like a million bucks. Like it's just like in the month, like we've, we've transformed, uh, we, we've put in place, like just email sequences, things that are like simple to us, things that just make the, you know, just like very common knowledge to us. Mm-hmm. And for people who like didn't have them in their, in their, in their whole entire funnel, they're sitting there 
and they're just like six xing their revenue just off of emails off of like abandoned cart emails you know what i mean like nothing yep. i'm not i'm not re like i'm i'm writing these things they're they're really good copy but they're not i'm not reinventing the wheel i'm not mm -hmm. i'm not you know i'm not yeah. doing something crazy here and it's just insane how the fundamentals in everything can just pay off astronomically if you put them in the right places mm. and that's basically what the company has been about for this whole entire time creating the foundations for fantastic businesses through writing through words right because words matter mm -hmm. a lot of people are sitting here saying like it's oh it's it's facebook right now or no it's not facebook it's instagram no it's tiktok no it's this other thing it's this other thing it's a, what people forget is those are the mechanisms mm -hmm. right those are those are the things that those are those are the delivery methods, right? They're the vehicles, basically. The vehicles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in every single piece of those things, there is copy. There is copywriting in every form, whether it's written, whether it's spoken. It doesn't matter. Like video, audio, where it doesn't, it's all the same. It's all copywriting. Mm -hmm. Copywriting are words that sell, right? Copywriting is words that sell. They, they are they are the, the foundation of of everything we do right now, when I'm trying, right, 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 I'm talking to you about how important copy is, that's yep. copywriting. Yes. Uh, whenever, oh, this is my favorite example. So remember those commercials when we were kids for like gushers and they were like yep. the yep. best thing in the world. And then you okay. sit there and you'd be like, I need that. And then you'd have to work on your parents, right? Mm. You have to be like, they're so good. They're amazing. <laughs> they come in all these different flavors. It's I an explosion in my mouth. <laughs> in your mouth. Oh my God. I love it. And you keep pounding them and hounding them and hounding them. And eventually they buy it for you. Mm. Now the hounding and hounding and hounding, that's a little more salesy than it is marketing, but the words that you're using in that moment, all of that is copywriting. Mm. All of that. I'm just trying to bring you closer. I'm just trying to persuade you, bring you closer to my ideals so that you see what I see. Mm -hmm. And if we agree on it, then we can move forward from here. That's mm -hmm. realistically how it is. Do we see the same thing when we are looking at the world? If, if, I see, if I see something and you see the very same thing, that means that we have a very similar track, right? And if we have the same track and I'm maybe a little bit ahead of you, mm -hmm. then you can learn something from me. And in that particular moment, when someone realizes I can learn something from this person, it clicks and they're like, I need to learn from this person. But I didn't, the, the, the beauty of copywriting, good copywriting, fantastic mm -hmm. copywriting is the whole, you know, show don't tell, right? Like we hear that yep. all the time with storytelling, but show don't tell, you wanna lead them there. You're not gonna, you're not gonna like open the curtain. They have to go through, they have to walk the path, look at the curtain and wanna open the curtain themselves. Mm -hmm. The second I do that for you, it's no longer your decision. Yeah which it then becomes skeevy a little bit, right? Like have you ever felt like, yeah, like just after like a sales call or just like after reading something, you're like that, that didn't feel nice. That didn't feel yeah. like that. It's, it almost just sounds like the, like the art of persuasion to me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so that's kind of how I, how I view it in a term of, I don't really know, like, I don't know the exact definition of it per se. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it really is a, a very big key component of, of, copywriting is persuasion now actually i have it all sound copywriting there's I, we have a couple of frameworks here that i'm gonna i'm gonna share with you guys um mm -hmm. but the main one the, the really really big one if we're going to talk about a general understanding of copywriting the best way that you can understand copywriting is through the three c's okay, okay. so it's the captivate it's the connect and it's to convert okay. captivating is like hooking you in reeling you in that's like the wow right that's like the persuasion the mm -hmm. connecting is the connection point is like we're the same there's a there's a word for it there's a the latin word for it. it's consanguinity uh mm -hmm. it means of the same blood so it's it's kind of expressing the like hey we're we're on the same path we're doing the same thing come come along i have something to show you like okay this was my life i lived like this i did things like this my clients did things like this they do they were you know struggling in this way and i'm thinking that you're struggling in the very similar fashion right Immediate first thought is yes, of course I'm struggling in the same fashion, right? And then after that, they just keep going down, down, and down, and down. I have so many things in common with this person. It's almost it's insane that I that that we have all of these connection points. I need to I need to be working with this person. Okay. And then the convert is like making that sale, right? Maybe not the actual like act of making the sale, but it's it's making the pitch 
in such a way where they're like, I have, I'm, I got to do the thing. Okay. And the thing can be buying. The thing can be going into my, my, my link in the bio. The thing can mm -hmm. be writing something in the comments. The thing can be DMing me. It doesn't matter what the thing is. It's getting them to do the thing. Okay. Because once you get someone to do, to do that, the, it just compounds, right? One small act on another small act on another small act on another small act. All of a sudden you're, you know, you're in a completely different place and you don't know where you've been, right? So I, mm -hmm. I think the best way to explain that is um, it was something you can learn in dating psychology, right? So okay. when I, well, it's okay. Let's say I'm... <laughs> I'm out at the bars. I, I hate these like because I'm not at the bars anymore. But like, let's just yeah, say no. Like, but I mean, say, yeah, like, an example, an example. Yeah. All right. You yeah. and I meet at a conference, and uh, I'm gonna go check my phone for something. But like, I'm holding, I'm holding a cup. So I'm like, hey man, can you hold this for me? Mm -hmm. And you, I just, I, I put it out. I put it out there, and you just reach for it because it's the mm -hmm. you, you just it's a reflex, right? You're yeah. you're just trying to be nice, right? You're like yeah, whatever, yeah. What does our brain have to do though in order to rationalize that? Like realistically, like we do things on impulse and we do things because we because of emotion and like because we want to do things and mm -hmm. what want is is relative. Um when you're doing something for someone else that you don't know that you're not really crazy involved with, like a best friend or your partner or anything like that. When we do an act of service for someone else, our brain needs to rationalize that act. Okay. Why did I do that? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the most, the easiest connection that your brain is going to make, I like that person. I can see myself being friends with that person. That person mm -hmm. is pleasant. Once we have that first interaction, everything else, it's a cascade. It's just one thing after the other. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's insane because like, I feel like I'm going on a bunch of different tangents. No, no, keep, keep going. I'm, I'm, all I can say is, okay, I'm just like. Fantastic story. Mm. All right. So we all know our boy on the 20, Ben Franklin, right? Mm. Ben Franklin was a master at doing this exact thing. Fan, just, just genius. All right. Like he's actually the reason why studies on this have happened. So he's like chilling in his play in his like own little library and stuff. And he, and he like needs to make a connection with this guy. Um, really, I, I'll be completely honest with you. I forget who, but it was another inventor at the time. Okay. And they just didn't get along. Like the other guy just fucking hated Ben. Like they just be for some reason, like for no reason, almost right. Like it was just like, it was like, Oh, like you're, you know, like you're fucking broads in France and stuff. And then you come back to America and now you're, you know, <laughs> you're this guy, you're, you're the guy. No, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to deal with your bullshit. <laughs> I, you don't, you don't impress me. Uh, and basically he's like, I need to get on this good, this guy's good side. I just, I need to, I know I need to like, it'll, it'll make everything much easier in my life. It'll make everything easier in his life. I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to be the nice guy. So this is what he does. He writes him a letter and it's this like very, just like, he's just puffing up this dude. Like he's just making him feel good about himself. He's like, man, I see you have one of the best libraries in on the East coast. Like this is like, this like in the colonial America, like you have like one of the best libraries and I admire that so much about you. I was hoping that I could read this one book from you. You could send that to me. It would mean the world to me. I you could just do me this one favor. It'd be, it would be amazing. I'd love it. Guy reads a letter. He's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'll send him the book. I'll, I'll be a good person here. Sends him the book. Ben doesn't even open the package, leaves it. Cause he has the book. Of course yeah, he has yeah. the book. Why wouldn't he? Why, <laughs> why, why is he doing this shit? He sends him a letter back. Thank you so much. It was a fantastic read. Great edition. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Can you send me this other book, please? I'd be a huge, huge favor. He does this over and over and over again. He's not read one of these books. Not, not okay. a single one. None of them has left their packet, the original packaging. Keep sending them back to him in the same packaging, if anything. And, uh, and just they keep going back and forth and back and forth. And like by the end of the year, they're best friends. They're buddies. Mm -hmm. They are like this. Mm -hmm. And this, the lesson that's learned from that is we do things, we, we do things for people we like. And we'll continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And the more times we do things for people we like, the more times we act on when someone else says something, the more likely we are to just do something bigger. So the mm -hmm. ask is always, is always very small. 
right? The ask is, hey, can I borrow this book? Yeah. But hey, can I borrow this book leads to something bigger. So in our case with like, you know, with social media and with, mm -hmm. um, and with the internet and everything, the ask is, hey, uh, just put a comment down there. Just do me a favor, put a comment in the, in the comment section or send me a DM or just put your email address here. I'll send you this PDF on X, Y, Z. Okay. doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. It's yeah. the exchange. And the fact that we exchange and the fact that there's one person who's like, oh, I'm doing the other person a favor makes them like you even more, even more, even more, even more. And to the point where they're like, yes, I will give you three grand for anything, for anything. Hmm. Now, again, an over-exaggeration, it has yeah, to be something but... that they need, something that they desire uh, and something that they see themselves doing, right? See themselves doing, using, whatever that may be. But any good marketing, any ethical marketing still uses that just in a way that doesn't, that isn't detrimental to the end user, right? That isn't like sleazy selling, right? Like we hear a lot mm -hmm. of this like sleazy selling, this like, like we've coined it like bro marketing, like, yo, do you want, you want a Ferrari? You want a Lamborghini? <laughs> you want to just throw, you want to throw a hundred dollar bills at people and just yeah. and not be like, that's yeah. Like that's, that's bro marketing. That's like mm -hmm. the sleazy selling that we're talking about here. Cause it, it works to a certain audience. Yeah. But it's not always like the person, the end user doesn't always feel great at the end of the day. And that's what we want. That's like our job. That's the job when we're writing copy. We want to make them feel good, right? And mm -hmm. on top of that, not only do we want to make them feel good in our copy, we want to make sure that they feel good about the product that they end up buying. So it's, it's this whole entire, you're, you're building relationships, yep. albeit individually, yes. But on it, it's like, you know, we're, fo we're fostering these seeds. We're planting these little seeds to have people just realistically be high value friends. Because mm. some of the people that, that come to us and give us and, and pay us are the people who are friends, but like we've given them things. Like we've given them things because we were like, uh, you know, it's value. They need the value right now. I'm all I'm going to do is give value. And when the time comes, that's, mm. again, that's, your, that's your deal. So is it more of like the repeated act of building that relationship or more based on like the emotional response that we're kind of trying to get from them? It's both. Okay. It's both. So everyone has a different journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can't expect absolutely everyone to fall in line with the same funnel. So it's like, it's not like when I write a seven email sequence on the back end of a, of a, of a sale, it's not like I know they're going to buy on email three. I have, I have data that suggests that there are a lot of people that buy on email three. There are a lot, there's a lot of data that suggests that they buy on email six and seven because those are on the last day and deadlines make people do things. That's the thing though, is that it's, it, when you create the journey, you have to keep everyone in mind, right? So when you create this journey, this marketing, this connection, this, this, this relationship, realistically, what you're doing is you need to make sure that that it hits and satisfies every single person along the whole entire way. So you need to, you need to cater to the person who's cold, the person who's warm and the person who's hot all the way through. Now, like this is where like automations and stuff go on, right? Because like when we're talking about like, Hey, the person who's a hot buyer and they buy first, they don't need emails two to seven, right? They bought, it doesn't matter. That's when you have like a tag and then like the automation takes the person out of it so that they don't get the rest of the emails, but everyone else who is in, is going to stay in until they're not in, right? They're mm -hmm. going to stay in the sequence. Yeah. They're going to stay in my funnel until either one of two things happens. Either I put them at the top of the funnel because I've determined that they're, they just need more nurturing or they're just not interested. Or obviously the third one, they buy. But at the mm -hmm. same point, they're still in the funnel at that point, right? Like, yes, they've bought something, yeah. but there's always going to be something else that they can buy. Always. Mm. It's just a matter of when. So Jim may buy a $50 product for me, right? But he may not buy something for another two years, yet he's still in my loop and I can determine that he's still chilling with me. He's still opening my content. He's still looking at me. He's still paying attention. Mm -hmm. And then that, you know, that, that next time I see, next time I see him, for some reason, he's ready to buy something that's worth two, $3,000 because I kept nurturing him. 
because I didn't treat him like, okay, well, the funnel is done. The, the, the sequence is done. Seven emails yeah. are done. I don't need to care about you anymore. It, you keep re-engaging. Just keep mm. re-engaging because eventually someone is going to hit. Someone. Okay. Doesn't matter if, it's in, if they've been seeing you for 15 minutes or 15 years. Mm. Eventually they will. Now, where do most people go wrong with this? Like, is it more in terms of like an overabundance of like an overabundance of trying to plant a seed? Like in terms of like, they're trying to force the seed, like they're trying to force the relationship or is it something different? Uh, so there are, there are instances of that, but you don't really see that all that much. The only time we're really seeing that mm -hmm. is when you're like cold DMing people. Okay. Uh, and, and that's the real big inst I, I'm that comes to mind because someone literally just cold DM'd me. Um, <laughs> and, but you can tell when someone's being genuine. Like when mm. I when I cold DM'd John, mm. I, one, I was asking something for him, right? Yes. I was asking for him to do me a favor. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was like, I'm having, like I was giving him the real points of my life at that, at that moment. I'm having struggles with these things. I need to be a better writer. Yes. I know you're a fantastic writer. I would love to learn from you. Mm -hmm. versus hey do you want to like build your own nft we have a team <laughs> that does, like it doesn't those things don't compute those aren't the same thing i know you're bullshitting me and i know that you sent that out to at least 200 other people or however many people instagram allowed you to before they blocked you yes. like that's just yes. the reality of the situation here authenticity goes a very very long way I know when someone's bullshitting me. Why? Because I'm the best fucking bullshitter you could ever meet. <laughs> all right. Like, and you and and that's not and it's not a bad thing, right? Like, I'm not mm -hmm. use, I when I say that I'm a bullshitter, I don't mean that in the sense that I'm using it for for bad. I, I'm saying I could pull something out of nothing. Yeah, it's not in a and, malicious way. Exactly. It's not malicious. And granted, the other people are not malicious either, but they don't give a shit. Yeah. And that's the thing. People need to know that you give a shit. Because mm. if you don't. Why am I here? Why, exactly. why am I going to give you money to do something for me if you don't mm -hmm. care about me? Because it means you don't care about my end result. And if you don't care about my end result, why am I going to give you the money? I want the end result. That's what I'm paying you for. Mm. And that's the, that's a real big issue because so many people are, are bogged down in this idea that we need to have a million followers, right? We need to have 200,000 yeah. followers. We need to have a million followers. We need to have all the engagement. We need to have this. We have, like, but do you know what engagement is? That's the, that's the question here is the engagement isn't a comment. The engagement yeah. is not even a, the, the engagement, the comment is a piece of the engagement. It's what's in the comment, right? It's what's in the DM. It's what's in the context. It's, it's all context. You know, we can't just put P, you know, we can't just buy our followers and buy our likes and buy our comments. I mean, we can do that, but it's going to mean jack shit. If you want to, mm -hmm. if you want to like puff up your chest and be like, I have a million followers. Okay. But do you have a business? Probably yeah. not because you're paying for those people. So it's not, it's, it's just not the same. I think we're an even bigger piece of where people are going wrong or rather they're missing the point is they don't allow the thing to, to run its course. I almost feel like it's more of not to cut you off, but they're not connecting to who they are. Like, uh, say you have like a hundred followers or something like that. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to connect to the people that they have now. They're just trying to gain from the outside. Would that be yeah. kind yeah. of that's part along of along the lines? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a big piece of it. And it's, I think, I think they're just, what it means to be authentic is, is that like, you're not like, not that you're not even putting on a face or that like, it's just that you fucking like, you believe in what you do. Yeah. Just believe in what you do, believe in the thing. And people will start to feel that off of you. That that's like, an, and I, and I, I, I hate to take something that we're talking about something that's more practical, but bring it into like a more, you know, not like into a more like theoretical sense, but that's, yeah, that's but, energy. Like that's, yeah. that's energy that mm -hmm. I, I know when someone's bullshitting me, I know mm -hmm. when someone's lying to me. I don't, I may not know what the pieces are, but I get that feeling in my stomach. Right. Yep, yep. And that's, that's something that's really, really important that we need to learn how to be just, just more aligned with ourselves and more aligned with like the people that we say we want to work with. Mm. So knowing who you want to work with, understanding who you want to work with, what are their problems? What are their pains? What are their, so what, what's the solution for them? 
what does their life look like? All these things, all these things are research, right? They, all these things are the, are the pieces that a lot of people actually end up neglecting. It's research and it's time. Those two things that people mm, okay. love to neglect. They're like, hey, the, the email sequence on the first try, those seven emails didn't work. <laughs> okay, they didn't work right now. Yep. What are you gonna do differently? You have all this data, what are you gonna do differently? And, mm. and people wanna just give up and go to the next thing after that, but that's not how it works, right? Because there are so many people who have done this over and over and over again. There are people who have done it for five, 10 years. Mm-hmm. And only now are they seeing the benefits? Are they reaping the, the rewards? I feel like that's even if we were to circle back when you had spoken about like planting a seed and mm-hmm. someone that might not be ready to buy now, but someone that's ready to buy in three years from now. It's that same, kind of that same thing that we're talking about here. You have to be willing to play the long game. Mm. I, I will admit I'm not, I'm not always the most patient person. I'm not. Yeah, no I'm, one is, but I mean, no one is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sitting there and recognizing that the long game is the, is what you need. Like I'm, I'm not in, I've never been in the mindset that I needed to be a millionaire tomorrow or Mm -hmm. that I needed to be a millionaire within the next five years. Mm -hmm. I know it's, and and this is a very cocky way of saying this, but like, I know it's going to happen. It doesn't, also, it doesn't matter to me, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me because it's not the monetary goal for me. If the monetary goal was the thing, I'd do something else. Yeah. Not that copywriting isn't lucrative. It's very lucrative. I get paid very, very well for what I do. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is massive payoff. I get to live a life that I want to live. I get, you know, I get all this money. I get the, the, you know, the appreciation of an audience and everything. It's, it, it, it all hits for me, but my goal isn't to be making a million a month. It's to make sure that every single person that I'm reaching and talking to actually understands copywriting. And when they, they, after coming to talk with me, they go and do the thing. That's what I care about more. That's, and every single time, if that's my only thing that I'm thinking on, all I can think of is the long game. There's, exactly. there's, it, yeah. there's only the long game because there's only so many people I can service at one given point, right? This is just your vehicle that you have chosen in order, just like we had said before, but this is your vehicle that you have chosen in order to help others, ba- in, in, in essence, help someone else. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That makes sense. So, all right. <laughs> now that we're, I love the we tangents. Were, <laughs> I love the, the tangents. tangents. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. So, um, yeah, I I feel like we should just um give like a a brief synopsis of exactly like what copywriting is now, and sure. then we'll go from there. Great. Yeah. So, I spoke about the components of copywriting, right? Like the three main pieces, yep. and that's to captivate, to connect, and to convert. Mm-hmm. Now, copywriting, what it is. It's your, it's your use of persuasion. It's your ability to communicate. It's, it's, it's literally all forms of communication that you've ever used. Uh, whenever you tell a friend that you went to a movie and you love that movie and they should go watch it, that's copywriting, right? Mm-hmm. It's, 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 the, it's the words on your website. It's the, it's the words under the caption. It's the words in an ad. It's the words in a v- video sales letter, a VSL. It's, a, it's the words in your emails. It's the words in your bio. It's, it's, it's everywhere. They are, it's absolutely everywhere. At every given point of your life right now is involved with some level of copywriting. There is, there is some form of copywriting in absolutely everything that you do, whether you know it or not, or whether you like it or not. You are always dealing with some form of marketing. So now, does this have to be like, does it have to be a story? Like, I feel like that's kind of like a misconception that I have, you know, personally. Let me, let me flip, let me flip that for you then. Okay. How many stories could you tell me throughout the day? Like, like how many, how many things happen to you in a day first? Like just- mm, I guess I, uh, if I was just to come up with a number, maybe a hundred. Okay. Well, I would, I would be willing to bet that of those hundred, you could put together 20 to 30 shitty stories yep. of those 30, <laughs> about 10 to 15 of them are pretty good. And mm-hmm. of those 10 to 15, five to seven of them are pretty great. Okay. And of those great ones, the fantastic ones are going to be the one to two hmm. point being 
everything is a story. Everything you do is a story. It doesn't have to be this like, it doesn't have to be this like this book, this like fairy, like this fairy tale ending. It doesn't, but like everything follows the cycle of a story in every single, in almost every single way, whether you know it or not, the hero's journey touches your life. Now the hero's journey, if you know, like who, um, mm-hmm. who Campbell is, it's just this idea that like, if you basically watch any Disney movie, it is every single Disney movie. It is every single movie you've seen, period. There is a main character. There is, you know, there is conflict. There is this like coming of age story. And then they're, and then they like, they like face the, face the, the villain the first time they fail, they get down on themselves. They face them a second time and they succeed. They go back home. They're a hero at that point. Same thing over and over and over and over again. It doesn't mean that you have to have a sword. Okay. You'd have a pen. You would have a mouse, you would have a phone. It doesn't matter. One of my favorite stories from John is not one that he actually tells all that often because it's <laughs> okay. ridiculous. It's the most, it's the, it's the most asinine. It's just, it's just a moment in time. It's just, a, it, it's two minutes. It's a two minute moment that he has. And he's like in Austin walking back from a CVS or something, or like a, you know, like a Walgreens. He went to go pick up Swedish fish. Mm-hmm. He's walking on the street. There's a dude in a full suit who rides up next to him on a scooter, like one of the, ra- like not a razor scooter, like the ones that like, you know, like the ones that you, that you the, find like all around. Yeah, the electric Those. scooters. Yeah, like the electric scooters. Guy rolls up at the stoplight, is chilling there, full suit, like swanky suit too, three piece. Like, mm-hmm. like not like he's going to like his first wedding, like he's going to a business meeting and he's about to sell a company, like that, that type of level of shit. And the guy's just like smoking a vape pen, like, like weed, he's smoking weed. He looks at him. John looks back at him. They do one of these. John puts out his hand to give the guy Swedish fish. The guy hands him the, the pen. John smokes from it, hands it back to him. The guy picks up whatever Swedish fish he wants. They both nod each other's head. They both nod at each other. And the guy just like zooms off. <laughs> and that's, that's the story. Mm. <laughs> but here's the, the beauty of it is that when john wrote it when john wrote the whole entire thing out into a post it was like it was a moment <laughs> but how many moments like that do you have every single day things that seem insignificant that are weird that are another one of his stories is the fact that he got sidetracked at the grocery store because he was right behind uh denzel washington and denzel washington was like going through avocados like they're just like just like trying to figure out what are the perfect avocados and sitting there for like 20 minutes and john's just mesmerized trying to trying to understand like what what is going on with these avocados how how important is this and then he doesn't get the avocados that he needed because all he can think of is like i don't want i don't want denzel washington's like like sloppy second titty fruit like what i don't i don't want any of that that's this i'm not a plebe that's not that's not Mm. who i am the story is he saw he saw someone he saw a famous person in a, a supermarket got distracted for 15 minutes and then didn't end up doing the thing that he was supposed to do mm-hmm. but that's that's that doesn't sound like a story right but the no. other thing that's a story that's a that you know beginning middle end there's all the characters mm-hmm. there's there's there is conflict in it and there's I, granted there's no real resolution he didn't get the avocados but like that's sometimes you live you end on a cliffhanger you know what i mean mm. We, no, all have sense. we all have stories throughout the day, throughout our lives. And if you just sit there for a second and like, think, just sit there and just, just allow yourself, allow the memories to come back, allow the stories to come back to you. They'll be there. Hmm. You, you have something to say. It's just, are you saying it in a compelling way? Okay. Now, do you think it's that people, I shouldn't even say this because I feel like mm-hmm. now you've just answered, you've just answered the question, but mm-hmm. In terms of like a compelling way. So it's not so much the story, just how it's set. Yeah, like, it's not It's not always yeah. what it is. It's what's mm-hmm. set or it's how. So I, I mm-hmm. tend to teach this like triangle to it's like a triangle of communication. Okay. Uh, at the bottom of the triangle, you have what? That's the content, right? Mm-hmm. In the middle, you have how, right? So how it's said, how it's phrased. That's, you know, context, right? So it's, it's not just, so the, the bottom is the story, the middle is the context and all the, the, the great stuff. And the top is who, who's telling the story. Mm-hmm. Now, you can tell a shit story as long as your who is huge. Okay. You, 
you need to tell a fucking amazing story if all that you have is the what. You can tell an all right story, a story that means jack shit, but as long as the how is great, as long as the how it's told is lights out, you can talk about taking your ibuprofen once a day for like mm. three days, five days, seven. Days. You could literally talk about that experience as long as it's compelling. Granted, I've I've made a very very ridiculous prompt, you know, talking yes. about taking ibuprofen. That that's nothing, right? But I'm sure if I sat there for like maybe 20 minutes, I can turn absolutely nothing into into something right and so can you right it's not it's not just me Mm -hmm. i do this for a living this is my day-to-day i do this all Mm -hmm. the time that doesn't mean that anyone else can't do it i'm just more practiced Mm. i just i have forced practice like i do it because i have to because i get paid to do it granted i do take practice outside of that to do it myself as well but i i just have more reps Okay. And as long as you get more reps, as long as you're willing to take the reps, like in anything, right? Like when you're in the gym, it's all about mm-hmm. taking, it's all about the amount of reps that you're getting in, um, time under tension rather. Mm. Uh, but the more you do that, that's when you're going to get the stuff that you, that you really want that you're talking about when you're like looking at other people and you're like, they, they can put together an amazing story. I wish I could do that. You can. Now, how can we start to kind of be more like self-aware in terms of I'm better at telling a story or giving a message through like a video or through words like through writing like is it just the repeated reps and then based on like um the response that you get or what you're most comfortable with what you're most comfortable with okay it's most literally what you're most comfortable with Hmm. so if you are just not about like talking to the camera if you just get very very crunched up and just anxious when looking at a camera and you you just like freeze up Mm -hmm. don't don't do video content it's just as simple as that if you feel a lot easier writing then awesome do that if you don't feel good writing it's not to say don't write but the mechanism the way that you go about it definitely has to be different it has to suit the way that you do the thing right we're not going to take writing out of the out of the equation at all in the Mm -hmm. same way that we're not going to take video out of the equation either We're just going to have to figure out a different way to utilize it. Okay. So if that's something as simple as writing a script for yourself, reading it, and then not being the face, like doing some sort of other content. So you don't feel like you you're on display. That's a way to do it. If you voiceover or something. Exactly. A voice. There's plenty of voiceover stuff that that people do all the time. They don't, they never show their face and they have (laughs) crazy audiences and it doesn't, Mm. it doesn't matter. But like, it matters that I'm connecting with you. Yes. I don't need mm-hmm. to see your face to connect with you. There are plenty of people that I've never seen their faces. There are plenty of accounts that I've seen that I follow that I've never seen them for their faces. I don't know who the hell they are. And I just, I feel close to that person somehow. Not in the same way that I feel close to like, like a John or like my yeah. partner or like any of that, but that I, there's a level of closeness involved. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for, and for people, this is a really, really big thing where they have struggle actually writing. They get like a bit of a writer's block or there's a bit mm-hmm. of like paralysis when ha- when it happens my my next my tip for that is is talk it out if you're a better talker if you're good at telling stories record yourself voice note it Hmm. and then just you know take the transcripts of it or write it transcript transcribe it yourself or put it into a transcription software i use otter.ai if you need that to talk that stuff out well, there, there's all your content and at that point it's just not at that point it's just like taking all the extraneous things placing everything together, condensing it, maybe prettying up the language, but like stepping away from it for a second, coming back to it, then doing an edit. You have a piece of content right there. Okay. Now, what about someone, let's say someone's been um, trying to become like a better storyteller mm-hmm. um, for maybe like a year or so. And it, it nothing seems to click. Uh, let's say two years instead okay. of just one year. Right. Um, and nothing seems to click. Would you... Could it be like a real lack of creativity? Or do you think that everyone has like a creative edge? They're just not sure how to express it yet in the right way. It's that. It's okay. that. That's, that's something that's really, really difficult to, uh, to touch on simply because it's different for every single person. Mm-hmm. And I've really, I've, I've sat down with it and it's, there's something to be said where you, there are no uncreative people. 
Mm. There are there are people who have who were not taught to be creative or who were who were suppressed in in their creativity okay. in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's your childhood, whether it was as adulthood, maybe you just didn't learn to play. But everyone mm-hmm. can learn to play, right? Like everyone, yeah, yeah. like everyone can learn how to play a sport. Everyone can learn how to jump rope. Like it's creativity is play. Mm-hmm. you were creative as a child you were there was no way and i and i doubt you were sitting at like anyone anyone really i doubt they're sitting at the wall staring at nothing or looking at blocks not doing anything with that like i don't i don't mm-hmm. i don't know that person i've never met that person yeah because <laughs> that person while might exist i firmly believe they may they, they don't exist i feel mm-hmm. that the creative person that you are that everyone is is somewhere deeper inside you there's something about it. There's some sort of trauma there. Or there's something, something there that you just don't want to express it. And you subconsciously don't want to express it. It's not that it's not available. It's not that you can't get it. It's that you just haven't figured out how to. Okay. Now, what are some of the ways that maybe um, if you've ever gone through something like that, like a writer's block or a creative type block, some of the ways that you've kind of gotten past those? So definitely changing up the modality. So like if I'm writing and I'm just, I can't get out of it, like I'll start talking it out and then I'll okay. start doing that. Um, another way that one, just like clearing your head, that's just the that's easiest, easiest thing. Go for a walk, go, like step away from the thing, right? Like mm. you need to step away from the thing. Obviously you're, sta- you're sitting too close to it at that point. One thing that I can say makes me like almost never have writer's block um, I watch a shit ton of content. I watch, I watch movies. I watch TV shows. I, like I'm, I am inhaling series by series, series after series. I'm just looking at what is, what is the next thing? What is good story? Give me more good story. Give me more different story. And uh, I've said this a handful of times to people. I say this a lot to my friends. You do not want to be in a movie with me. <laughs> you don't, you really don't. Unless you want to hear my commentary, unless you want to hear, and, and if you want to hear me actually point out exactly what's going to be happening in the plot line, then, <laughs> then by all means, sit next to me, sit next to me, because I'll do that. That's what I do. Uh, my, funny enough, like I, um, I grew up watching Buffy, like I, like I didn't, like okay. I, I wasn't like religious to the show, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, mm-hmm. fantastic 90s show. Uh, my partner, she is in love with the show. It was mm-hmm. her thing throughout her childhood. Like it was just her connection. It was like, she, she, she's French. So it's how she learned English. Mm. So that she has a really deep connection to the show and she knows the show front to back and I haven't seen it front to back. So we're going through it and there have been like maybe six or seven episodes where like when I chime in and I'm like, hey, so this is going to happen. And then she looks at me in awe, like, how do you know that? And I'm just like, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's patterns in storytelling. Mm. It's patterns in storytelling. And once you get, enough reps underneath your belt of looking at it and being like that's that type of story that's that type of story mm. that's that type of story you see the patterns and you start actually pointing them out so i have seen i've seen this show for you know i've been watching it for a little while and you know it just came to the it just popped into my head this is the vampire diaries <laughs> granted it's before the vampire diaries mm-hmm. but it's the same format this is the same fucking thing mm. to the t like like almost to the T granted again, maybe one character is shifted. One character Mm -hmm. is split into two characters. It's the same story, Mm. same personalities, the same avatars show up in all of the same stories. They just, Mm. they're always there. They're always there because there's a familiarity to that with us. There is, we like that familiarity. However, we can't watch the same thing over and over again. So what do we do? We just create something that's a little bit different, right? We create a different narrative. We create a different detail, but the same core, the foundation is right there in every single one. I'm sure if you sit down and you watch Mm. every single action movie, you will be able to pinpoint every single moment in that movie that is, that is taken from another movie and another movie and another movie and another movie. Until we see like the first movie, you know what I mean? Like you can take Mm -hmm. it back all the way there. It's the same thing with music. Music is the very same way. Hmm. And that's the really interesting part about this is that when we're talking about creativity right now, yeah, it is creativity has a formula. Hmm. There's a formula okay. to creativity. Yeah. I mean, this is something I had never even thought of or would have been able to mm-hmm. figure out myself. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is very, very interesting. So if you really think about it, 
So I'm, I'm more of a creative brain, right? I can turn mm-hmm. on the analytical brain, but I'm more creative first. The, the, the thing is that creativity, when we're talking about it, it, it has its own process, right? It has, everyone has their own process, but there is a process to creativity. And if you find the thing that works for you, you can easily put together a step-by-step-by-step, right? So like talking about telling a story, we're like how to be more of an like like the ways that we can be like more effective storytellers there's there are like five pieces of every single story there's a frame so that's like the positioning of the story the background information there's the hook which is the thing that's going to reel you in the 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 wow the the wow factor the the you know what i mean like when you watch like a first episode of a tv show and at the end of the tv show they create this really crazy open loop and it makes you want to watch two three more episodes after the fact yeah. And then it's like 4 a.m. and you're like, ah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> that, that's the hook, mm. right? That's that's your first initial hook in the series of a long, in, 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 the, in a series, right? So like when we're mm-hmm. talking about the grand scheme of most TV shows are anywhere from eight to 12 episodes now, within the first hour of eight hours, you get your hook. Mm. That's, mm-hmm. it's in the first part of the, of, of the story in general. Then you have your turn. So, you know, this very, like an inciting event something that happens, some big, you know, something that like creates anarchy. Uh, The dive, just more details that kind of funnels into the frame. And then the payoff, what what do I get at the end of this? What's the resolution to the story? Okay. Now, a lot of people can take that and just from there, just write, like just you, if you have those four or five, what was that, five things? You have those five five things. Yeah, we have those five things in a list and you just, you have a story in your head and you're like, all right, what's the frame? And then you start talking about what's the backstory? What's, what is all the context you need to talk about? What's the hook? What is, what is the person going to learn from this? What is the, what is the, uh, what is like the thing that's going to reel them in? The turn, what's the inciting event? What's the action that's going to happen? The dive, what are all the details that these people need to know? The payoff, what's the result, right? Like, here's the result. What's the, this is the end game. This is the, the, the resolution to the story. Mm-hmm. Those components are in absolutely every single story. So if anyone who's a little more analytical minded, they, mm-hmm. they, they really are stuck in this. I'm not creative. Use a framework. Hmm. That's okay. how you get out of it. And then from there, once you actually start to identify those things, once you're like, oh, that's the frame. Oh, that's a dive. Oh, that's a hook. Oh, right there. That's the payoff. Once you start identifying those things, your brain is going to start making those connections and you're not going to need that anymore. You're just going to free, Mm. you're just going to free flow eventually. And then you can start moving things around, right? And you can start creating stories. You can start, I mean, I don't suggest it, but you can start Tarantinoing it, right? Like you can start Mm -hmm. putting things in the middle, like starting your story in the middle of the actual story and then flashbacking or just moving around and like, you can do all those things, Mm -hmm. but you have to know the cores, the core, the fundamental. Okay. Now, so is there like one particular part of that five parts that either draws someone in the most or creates like a, the biggest emotional response? Oh, the hook. Or do they kind of, the hook, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's your right. hook. Your, okay. your, your hook is your first like, oh shit. It's your oh shit mm-hmm. moment. It's like, the, it's like the, the perk up, right? I have to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for... So I'm watching, uh, right now I'm currently watching the, the Lakers TV show with uh, John C. Okay. Riley. Uh, I mm-hmm. forgot the name of it. Um, but it's basically putting together the, like the whole entire story of, of the Lakers dynasty getting built in like 78. And then basically the whole entire eighties, them crushing it and just turning the NBA mm-hmm. in from, from something that was about to be defunct in like three, four years into what it is today. Because right now, mm-hmm. basically, what we can we can thank the Lakers. We can thank uh, what's his name, uh, Jerry Buss. We can thank Jerry Buss for basketball the way that it is today, hmm. that, okay. like almost directly him and his daughter. Like that's just fact. Uh, the hook for me in that the hook for me in that storyline was just how many people were popping. Like how many people in the story their origin story was popping up in this story you you got to see like paula abdul's starting mm-hmm. you got to see 
uh, his, his daughter, Jeannie Buss, like I, like I, for some reason, I didn't know that she was that involved as a kid or, or how, how intense the whole entire situation was, but she's been there since day one when she was like 16, 17, mm-hmm. you see, uh, you know, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's backstory. You see Magic Johnson's backstory. You're seeing all of these people, like you're seeing Pat, uh, Pat Riley's story. Um, yeah, Pat Riley, uh, the announcer, right? Like that, like, mm-hmm. the, you know, this world famous announcer and like you see him like after basketball and, you know, being this schlub and like, it's every, for me, the hook is every single moment that makes me go, oh, wow. All right, I need to, I need to know what that, I need to know more about that. I need to know okay. more about that specific thing. That's the hook. Now, when you say like the hook for me, so the hook can be different for each person. Yeah. So realistically now, all right. Now for the most part, when we're looking at this in a very, very straightforward way, Mm -hmm. there is only one hook. However, because of that, because creativity is again, fluid and there's a, like, while there is structure in this, there Mm -hmm. are different things that are going to catch different people. Right. But like, when we're talking about the hook in this particular context, like when we're talking about it in TV and stuff, the hook can be a handful of different things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the big at the end of the, at the end of the episode, it's the big, the, the cliffhanger usually. Uh, however, when we're talking about like doing marketing for like, you know, fitness coaches and stuff, the hook mm-hmm. is the same thing. I'm going to tell you how I lost 20 pounds in four weeks and I kept it off. Okay. Right. That's, that's the hook. That's the, the thing that they're here for. Mm -hmm. what are they here for in tv shows it's the story right the whole obviously it's the story but what in the story are you here for for me i love i love the fact that there's origin stories within an origin story it's very meta for me it's very like like oh where like where is this going why is that information even important Mm -hmm. i want to know i want to know things that are like like if they're seemingly unimportant are they actually important like, are they, is this a, is this a detail that I need to actually keep in mind? And then I hold on to that detail and I sit with it and I like, okay. wait until it pops up again on the screen. This kind of, this happens in a, in a more direct way when we're talking about copy for like fitness coaches, for businesses, for supplement companies, mm-hmm. that is like, that thing is like that one moment where they're like, I need to pay more attention because this is the thing that I'm here for. This is the thing that I want. This is the desired result. I need to know how he got there, how he did mm-hmm. it, why he did it. That's, that's what we're looking for in the hook. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you start to look at, um, like, let's, uh, I want to stay in the example of like fitness coaches. Mm-hmm. What starts to separate one person from another that has perhaps the same hook? Like, why might I go and sign up with X person versus Y person? Is it just like a personality thing or... Are there other underlying factors to it? Is it like a trust thing? So there are actually, there, there are a couple of things. Uh, people will go to you if you can say something completely different from everyone else or that you're saying something totally new. Those are okay. the two instances that people will go to see you specifically. Mm-hmm. Now, for example, within the fitness industry, like we've we've pretty much covered absolutely everything that we can cover in terms of in terms of ways that we can lose <laughs> yeah. fat ways that yeah. we can build muscle it's it's science right there's only so many mm-hmm. ways that you can say the same thing over and over again it's how you say the same thing over and over again in a different way in your own particular way so it's your personality it's who you are it's the person it's the the brand that you're projecting on top of the way that you're saying the thing Okay. That makes sense. They, they, they play into each other. Right. So like you will say something a very certain way because of your brand, your personality, Mm -hmm. part of your personality though, will show you how to say the thing differently. Right. Like, because you, you say one thing, you have one point of view, you have like, for example, you, let's say that like you think that sumo deadlifts are absolutely pointless. Mm-hmm. they do nothing you could just you you could just do a regular deadlift and get the same the same thing out of it right mm-hmm. the way that you say that the way that sean says that sumo deadlifts shouldn't even be for sumo wrestlers they are absolutely pointless here's what you need to do hmm. make it easier on yourself because when i do that like is, you know what i'm saying like it just you're yeah. getting into this you're getting into your own reasoning and why you say things and why you do things mm-hmm. and the hope is that the audience sees things and does things in a similar fashion. 
Okay. So that's how they attack. They, that's how they attack onto you. And they go, this is my person, right? Because you can go to any fitness coach and get more or less the same service. If we're talking about bare bones, like mm-hmm. what you're getting at the core, right? Either fat loss, muscle gain, or, just, you know, like body composition, nutrition, all like you're getting all of these things that from basically anyone for the most part, right? Like if we're going to, if we're going to compare three people next to each other, the difference mm-hmm. in them is their personality. It's their branding. It's how they say things. Okay. Now through your experience and people that you have helped, what are some of like the thing, like the factors that you take into play of someone that has like a fear of showing their personality or like online and things in terms like, does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Okay. It's, okay. it's easy to get, it's easy to get bogged up in the whole social media thing, being perfect mm-hmm. online, showing up all the time. Listen, I don't show up all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. I, I show up however much I can show up, however mm. much bandwidth I have to show up with. Mm. Um, does that mean don't post as much? No, that means, that means find a way within your bandwidth to post at the maximum capacity that you could post at. So if you can't do more than four, more than three times a week posts, you're doing three posts a week. Mm. You're not doing four because the fourth one is going to set you over the edge and then you're not going to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's building that consistency. So if someone who's like actually like afraid to do those things, it's, here's the real, real question. Are you shy to be yourself in person? Like, are you, are you like apprehensive to showing people who you are as a person when you're interacting with them one-on-one? Mm-hmm. If you are, then, okay, then maybe, maybe you might want to rethink the, the, the road you're going down, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're, you're saying that you want to be an entrepreneur or a solopreneur or simply a, uh, uh, not a hobbyist, whatever, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you want it to be like your side hustle, right? Like mm-hmm. you want, you want to make money some sort of revenue from this the only way that you are going to be able to do that is to create some sort of narrative whether it is your personality your direct personality Mm -hmm. or a brand that you build up completely by itself Mm, they need something to connect to though and that's that we connect best best with humans Mm. Obviously, because it's again, we're talking about I was I told you yeah. earlier the word consanguinity. I am you, you are me, we are of the same blood. Mm. That is super, super, super important. Is it the end all be all? No, you don't have to show your face all the time. You don't have to, you don't have to be on all the time. You don't have to have 50 stories a day. You don't have to post two, three times a day, two reels, mm. one static post. That's what people are trying to create when they're telling you to do those things is they're trying to create consistency. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about like algorithms and when we're talking about marketing or consistency, Mm -hmm. it's all, that's the only thing when people take it too far, when they're saying post once a day, post Mm -hmm. every day, twice, do this, create a level of consistency that feels comfortable for you. And then from there, start building up. And if it doesn't feel comfortable when you build up from there, then keep it where it's at until, until something changes. Mm. And if you're not getting the response you want, yeah, something needs to change. Okay. But it doesn't mean post a million times. Right. And it doesn't mean show your face all the time. It doesn't mean show up on stories 50 times a day. It, you, you need to create what works for you. Okay. And the second you are in, a, you're out of alignment with that. That's when you start playing the wrong game. Mm. Now, have you seen like this kind of fear outside of social media, perhaps in different conferences and things like that, or not really? Because I know that you more uh, tailored to like six figure businesses now, but maybe earlier in your career um, and maybe how people have gone wrong and then um, how you have helped them pass it a little bit. So, okay, this is a nice little coaching moment right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, the clients that don't show up, like the clients that don't meet us 50% halfway are the clients that end up getting like the worst results. Like they mm. just do. Like I've written, there have been times in, in the past for me, this was like before Wellspring Media where I'd written things mm. and I'd written a ton. I'd written so, so much. And you could, you know, pick around from it. You know, you can like grab this little piece right here and use that for content. Or you can put this in an email right here there are like times where I've written like 10,000 words for a client. Mm. 
and they like don't use a single bit of it and then they're like or like they use a piece of it and then they don't keep using it they use it once and they're like yeah it didn't really do anything and the the people who don't show up the people who aren't willing to show up for themselves no one's going to show up for you okay so more just the lack of action than anything yeah just the lack of kind of trust within yourself to go and do something exactly and if you need if you need someone to if you need help doing that hire a coach that's what they're for Mm. like Mm. that's the point so Mm -hmm. like i i have a coach like my uh, david david is my coach Uh, Mm -hmm. david from from uh from rfs he is my coach he is the guy that i send my check-ins to Mm -hmm. for no other like he doesn't even need to do anything i just send him a picture that's the only that's literally the only interaction we have on that on that he's not going through my macros he's not giving me new workouts he's not doing i'm just sending him a picture of me going to the gym why because i need Mm -hmm. that accountability that's it Mm -hmm. you just need to push yourself to do that one thing now do is it do is it to do the thing that feels so uncomfortable push yourself to do the uncomfortable thing all the time not necessarily it's not always the case but you do have to show up for yourself in some way Mm -hmm. and for us when a client doesn't it just it it just like it's like a waste right like it's it's not i was just gonna say it's not worth it it's just a waste of energy just as we were talking before yeah yeah I'd rather not write the 10,000 words, no matter how fucking amazing they are and save it for someone else who would appreciate them. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing is the same thing here with when people don't want to show up, they don't want to do that work. That's fine. But don't be upset when it doesn't go your way. Mm, Like don't don't be mad. You don't want to show up on, on social media. That's cool. But don't start bitching to the world that like all the tactics that you're using aren't working because they need those pieces of social media. There are other tactics you can use that do not require social media. If you want to do mm-hmm. SEO, start writing blogs, do SEO, start doing videos there, start doing whatever, like figure something else out, mm-hmm. but don't complain where you're at yeah. because where you're at is a product of you and no one yes. else. Yeah. I, I have learned so much I'm trying to soak everything in like I almost felt like this was like a coaching call (laughs) but um (laughs) but no I I um I feel like leaving off on that note would be very good for everyone just in terms of taking action and kind of trusting yourself with what you need to do yeah you know so did you have any um closing thoughts that we might not have touched on or uh, I know we just kind of went with the flow with things but I love, I listen, I love going with the flow. I think we've covered a lot of things. Yeah. Main takeaways. If you, if you are always, you are, you always have the capability of being creative. You always have the capability of doing the thing that you think you don't want or think you you think you can't do Mm. when you're doing copywriting. Just remember, use, use your frameworks. If that's not something that works, if, if doing it like just raw, like just by itself is not helping you put in some frameworks, right? Go look for some frameworks, see what works for you and then continue doing it because with copy being so important within every single, every business, you can't get around it. There's no, the only way that you're getting around it is if you pay someone else to do it. And uh, when you don't pay someone enough to do it, it never sounds like you and it becomes a bitch and then you have to rewrite it. And then it's just like wasted money right there. Or you pay someone like me to do it and you put together, yeah, like, and it's like a 20, like our average contract is like twenty twenty five thousand $25,000 a month on a retainer. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, I, you know, we don't come cheap. Yeah. However, the reason why we do that, the reason why that happens is because we do all the fucking research. We were like, like we're getting, we're, we're getting into your life. We're not just getting into your assets. I'm like looking into who you are as a person. I'm asking you questions. I'm asking specific questions about you so I can see how you answer them. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all the work that like you should be doing. Mm -hmm. And if you, and if you want to pay me to do that, I will every single time I will do that. I will put in my effort 110% and it will be a fantastic page. If you want to do it for yourself, though, if you want to start doing it for yourself, start doing it for yourself. Start small, but start putting in frameworks. Start testing things. Start being curious about new ways to write. New way, like try and find these frameworks, and then try and find to say, try to do the same thing over and over again in a different way. Write the same story three different times, four different times. Stretch your mind. Watch new content. Watch videos. Do this. Do that. All that. Do it all. Mm. 
but make sure you do something because <laughs> pushing the copy to the side being like letting it be this fearful thing that like you're just you're i'm gonna get to it at some point or i'm gonna eventually pay someone to do it's not the way to do it people that we work with that actually end up getting the best copy are the people who have done it themselves plenty and are great at it they're just at a point in their business where they don't need to do it anymore but they know what to give me they know everything that they need to give me in order for me to succeed for them which makes them succeed in turn no that makes sense so yeah but hey i really appreciate you uh coming on i i will be re-listening to this with my notepad um before this that. comes out so um yeah i don't have i don't know if i have any six-figure earners that are um gonna listen to this but um is there any anywhere that uh you want to share where we can find you to soak in yeah. your content at least and i know that you'll learn something following you so appreciate that thank you yeah so we can follow uh you can follow me on social media on um on instagram you'll give dot almog uh john you can also son, follow my my business partner john at john romanello um and you can follow wellspring.media posting more on there and through that we'll also have our site which is like literally still like in the works right now but it's like it's beautiful it's fantastic so that'll be unveiled on the on that social media oh also brett so brett dot Kaufman 26. Okay. All right. Awesome. But that'll be all for today. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Having, Thank you for having no. me on, man. No, of course. I really appreciate it. All right. Perfect. Let's see.